In this video, I want to go through the pre-lab for the gravimetric analysis of a metal carbonate lab. So before we get into the pre-lab questions, I just wanted to review the purpose, procedure, and then the way that you can have your data and observations set up. So remember, in your lab notebook, you should always fill in experiment number, title, name, and date up at the top. So you can put today's date, whatever date you start the pre-lab can go up at the top. Then you have purpose. So in this lab, this is a little bit different in that it didn't outright say the purpose of this lab. Instead, it was in the background information. In the background information, there was a section that said experiment overview. That's another word for purpose. So you want to make sure that you read that so that you know exactly what you're doing. And that's what I used to paraphrase the purpose. Notice I did not write a whole paragraph. I just wrote one sentence. Then the procedure, I know this is a little bit longer of a procedure. There were 28 steps in the lab handout, but I paraphrased and I actually took it down to less than 28. So I put steps of the procedure on the left-hand side. And then what I did is anywhere that it said to measure a mass or anytime we were doing a reaction, I wrote those blanks over here on this side. Now you don't have to write them over here on the side, but the reason I did this is so that I remember to take these observations or collect these pieces of data. It does say to record in a data table, and I'll show you where that data table goes once we do the pre-lab questions, but it's good to still record it over here just so that you have it. Notice there are also some spots where I wrote observations. Some of this is a little close together. If you want to space it out a little bit more, that's fine. I just tried to keep it next to the spots in the procedure that it corresponded to. The same thing on this side. So you'll notice instead of 28, I got it down to 26 steps and just so happened to finish it on this second page. Again, what I did over here is I wrote any time I'd have to collect any piece of data or make an observation. I wrote that over here on the side. So even if you didn't do this data and observations part, during the lab, you can actually go in and you can just record when it says to record something. So next, what I want to do is I want to set up pre-lab questions because any pre-lab that we do is always purpose, procedure, and then pre-lab questions. So I'll go ahead and label the section pre-lab questions. Now in the pre-lab questions, you do not have to rewrite the question, but you do need to show your work. So if you look at the lab handout, it says to use a separate piece of paper, but it's just going to go right into our lab notebook. And in the pre-lab questions, it gives us a data table. And it says, an unknown metal carbonate was analyzed gravimetrically and yielded the following data. And then they give us this data table here. So then underneath the data table, it says, number one, from the mass of CaCO3, calculate the moles of CaCO3 that precipitated. So pre-lab question number one. I don't even have to worry about labeling these because these are just pre-lab questions. You only have to label your calculations which are in your post-lab. So I want the moles of CaCO3. So from the mass of CaCO3, which in the data table is 1.838 grams, I just want to go to moles. So I'll use the molar mass and I'll go to moles and the molar mass of 100.09 grams and so this equals 0 0.01836 moles of CaCO3. So pre-lab question number two says calculate the molar mass of the unknown. So for this, we need the molar mass of the unknown. I don't know what the chemical formula is, so I can't just use the, period the periodic table to find the molar mass. Instead, I'm going to have to use data here. So I know that the units for molar mass are grams per mole. So if I know the grams of the unknown and I know the moles of the unknown, I can figure out the molar mass. So if we take a look at the data table, we are given the mass of the crucible and the unknown, 
and we're given the mass of just the crucible, and then we're also given the mass of the unknown. So to figure out the mass of the unknown, we just had to subtract. So the mass of the unknown from the data table is 1.972 grams. Again, this is from the data table. And to figure that out, I subtracted the mass of the crucible plus the unknown minus just the mass of the crucible. Now what I need to do is I need to figure out how many moles was this then? How many moles of unknown was this? And so to determine the number of moles, we're going to stoic. So we're going to stoic to moles, from moles of CaCO3. I'm going to do that down here. 0 0.01836 moles of CaCO3. If you read the background information, which I always say you should do, you will notice that there's a balanced equation in that background information. The balanced equation shows us the mole ratio of calcium carbonate to the unknown. Now I want to just say M2CO3, the reason that we can't find the molar mass of this, M represents a group one metal. So Li plus, Na plus, K plus, that's what M represents. M is not an element from the periodic table. M represents a group one metal. So from the balanced equation, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, which means 0 0.01836 moles of the metal carbonate. There's how many moles of the metal carbonate we had. So I know how many grams of the unknown metal carbonate. I know how many moles of the unknown metal carbonate. So if I divide those, 107.4 grams per mole. There's our molar mass of our unknown. The whole point of this gravimetric analysis lab is to actually do this. These pre-lab questions are going to help with our post-lab questions. The whole goal is to figure out, is this sodium carbonate or is this potassium carbonate? So pre-lab question number three says, calculate the molar mass of the following group one metal carbonates. So 3A, you're going to be finding the molar mass for Li2CO3. Now, if you just show your work for one, you don't need to show your work for the other two. B, you're going to be finding it for Na2CO3, and C, you're going to find it for K2CO3. So I want you to take a second, if you haven't done this yet, pause, go ahead and go through and find the molar masses. So here are your values that you should get for your molar masses. You're just adding up all of the elements from the periodic table. So the second to last pre-lab question says, what is the identity of M2CO3? So based on this molar mass that we found from the lab data, you want to figure out which one of these molar masses is this closest to. So we should answer that the unknown is Na2CO3 okay, because the molar mass is the closest. Now the last pre-lab question says, calculate the percent error in the molar mass determination of M2CO3 by comparing the experimentally determined molar mass to the known molar mass. Percent error is a calculation you need to know. So if you need to write this somewhere else as well so that you have it, do that. So percent error is different from percent yield. Percent yield is what we do in lab when we're figuring out um, what percent of what we got did we actually, or what, what percent of what we were supposed to get did we actually get. Percent error is how close or how far away were we. The lower the percent error, the better. So percent error, to calculate percent error, is the absolute value of actual minus experimental divided by the actual number times 100. So actual is what's the number actually supposed to be. Experimental is what did we collect in lab. So for percent error for number 5, the actual value is from the periodic table. 
So 105.99 minus 107.4. We're going to take the absolute value. So that just means that the top number should always be positive. And we're going to divide by actual times 100. So when you subtract these first, just make it positive. Divide by 105.99 and then multiply by 100. You should get a 1.3 error and make sure you're doing that in your calculator and you're getting the same thing. So a 1.3 percent error is very very good. That means we were very close to what we were supposed to get. So the very last thing that I want to look at and that I want to show you is where we'll put our data table. So typically we do not have space over in this column to put our data table which is why we continue to collect information. However a data table is very very nice to summarize all of our data into. And so what I'm going to do is I am down here. I'm going to go ahead and put data and observations. And I'm just going to put continued. So I'm going to continue my data and observations. Here is where I'm going to put my data table. Now when you draw a data table, you need a ruler or a straight edge. You need something to make your line straight. So if you take a look at the data table, it has 13 lines. So four, five, six, seven, eight. So I only have eight lines. I'm just gonna go ahead and just make two data tables. I'm just gonna make it two columns. So I'll go ahead and do, I'll just go straight across. So one, two, three, four, five, six, so my data table has straight lines. I'll even put another one down the middle. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw my lines across for every line of data. So here's my data table. Now again, if you had the space to do the entire data table here, then go for it. That's fine. I didn't have the space and instead of going to the next page, I'm just going to use this at the bottom. Now when you are creating data tables, there are a few things you need to remember. One, you have to use a ruler. This looks much neater than not using a ruler. That's part of the rubric. Use a ruler or a straight edge. The second thing is to actually label your data table. So I'm going to label it data table one. It has to have a title like this, data table one with a number, and then give it just a, a quick title. So I'll make this say um, data for gravimetric analysis, right? Something like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put each row of my data table in here. Now, if you want to make it look like the data table from the lab, that's okay. Every data table might look different. I'm going to do it like this and fill in my data. So I'm going to go ahead and, and rewrite all the information in this data table. Okay, so now you can see I went and I filled everything in. I essentially just took what was on the data table and I put it here. Now again, I made it into two columns. If you want to do it all in one column, if you have the space, fine. I just tried to save space here. But the biggest thing is that you continue it in your data and observations section. It has a number, so data table one, and it has a title like data for gravimetric analysis, and you've used a ruler. That is the biggest thing when it comes to data tables.